Hello, I'm JW. Uh, just a quick follow-up on that insect repeller device. Uh, here it is, just screwed the thing back together. And if you haven't seen the previous video, then of course the link is in the usual place. And a number of comments were made on this course, and uh, that's fine because that's the whole point of putting the videos there for people to comment on them. And uh, someone actually put a comment that uh, you can buy these with the UK plug on on eBay, and they have the uh, three UK pins, and the earth pin is partially sleeved. So I just had a quick look on eBay, and yes, here's an example. And sure enough, the earth pin is partially sleeved. So, of course, that's uh, completely unacceptable. The earth pin is either supposed to be solid metal, or in the case of it not actually being used, it can be made out of plastic or some other insulating material. So uh, partially sleeved, completely wrong. Now, of course, in this case, this doesn't need an earth, but uh, the fact that the uh, sleeved earth pin exists is a sure sign of uh, really poor quality uh, manufacturing. And, of course, the inside are going to be pretty much the same as this one. And another comment was about uh, the uh, test done with the oscilloscope there, and that the fact that an isolating transformer must have been used. Well, yes, sure it was. Here is the uh, transformer in question. And uh, for those that don't know, if you attempt to uh, connect an oscilloscope to a circuit which is connected to the mains, then there's a very good chance of something blowing up, because the uh, input to the oscilloscope, or at least the outer grounded part of it, is connected to the mains ground. So therefore, if you connect that black uh, clip lead to something in your device, then effectively you're connecting that to mains ground, and there's a very good chance of, of course, shorting out the mains and uh, creating a large explosion, destroying the device and the oscilloscope and anyone in the vicinity. So we are going to be doing that, and of course, uh, isolating transformer, absolutely essential. And so that was obviously used in the previous demonstration. And the third point is the fact that this thing has the piezo sounder just behind that uh, plastic grill there. Probably just see that uh, shining inside. And of course, due to the uh, fact of the circuit inside, it's pretty obvious that that's going to be mains referenced as well. Now, you can't actually get a finger through there because that grill is uh, fairly fine, but there's a fairly good possibility of uh, mains contact going on there. So uh, let's just test out this device straight away and see if it passes or fails. So for the test, we're going to use this uh, testing machine here. And essentially, for the purpose of this test, this side here is pretty much irrelevant, not using that. And it's just the uh, pieces over this side. I've got our device uh, plugged into this adapter, and that goes into this uh, four way extension, and that's plugged in the front here. And the other testing part is this probe, which has that retractable prong, and it's just a question of placing the probe around the uh, device in question, particularly in the uh, grill area, and of course, while uh, turning on the test. And uh, just to turn on the machine here, the test we're going to use is this one, which is uh, for, as it says, double insulated equipment. So it's uh, applying a voltage of uh, 3,750 volts between the end of this and the device here. So any kind of current flow between this and that indicates a fail. And here we've got the uh, two lights here. If it's a pass, it will obviously be green. And in the event of it failing, then this red one will switch on. And this also has a very loud buzzer, which switches on as well. So if you are wearing headphones or whatever, then uh, best to turn down the volume, as it's uh, pretty likely that this will fail. So we'll... Uh, just uh, switch on, and it's green at the moment because we haven't actually applied the probe to anything, and it's just then a question of bringing in the probe and uh, applying it to the device. Well, that's obviously a fail straight away, and maybe you can see the uh, visible spark there. Now I'll just try it on the other polarity, so I'll just reverse the device in there, and just do the same again. So there's a pretty obvious fail, and not too surprising given the ridiculously short distances between the metal plate there and the uh, outside of the device. So a load of junk, and of course that's something we uh, pretty much already knew. So until next time, thanks for watching.